G'day boys and girls, welcome back to the Truth Footy YouTube channel. Today it's myself and Daniel H. Busher. The H stands for Hebrew. How are you today, Busher? Yeah, about as good as I was when we did the podcast. <laughs> yeah, we did just do a podcast, so we are knackered. But we owe it to our fans to do weekly tips videos as well. And this is the first time I'm allowing you on the show. Understandable. Uh, I'm just kidding. It's good to have you on. Good to have you on. People appreciate my tips. Gross. They also appreciate my predictions on football. <laughs> <laughs> so, Busher, if you happen to watch the show, how I usually start it is doing a shout out to the person actually winning our True Footy YouTube channel. Don't you end it with that usually? Sometimes, yeah, because yeah, I, I mix and match because sometimes I do it on the True Footy, uh, True Footy Reacts or sometimes I do it on yeah. this. So Whenever you remember. Yeah, whenever I remember, basically. Depends how well I'm going is whether I remember. I've got to give a shout out to the winner of last round was a guy called, or woman, called RNH. But they scored five. They were the only person to score five, so not bad. How did you do, Busher? Let's have a look. I'll say I uh, don't even know. I think I forgot the tip this oh, week, to be honest. Yeah, sure you did. Sure you did. That's why you... Yeah, you literally got two because you forgot the tip. So did Joycey. Uh, I love how the true footy tipping like competition, last spot is Joycey and fourth last spot is you. And Louis only a And Louis 18th. But so you should follow our videos for tipping advice. We are experts. We know what we are talking about. Farmer Wants a Fife is still our oh, leader. Great say. name. Yeah, Farmer Wants a Fife, yeah. I think he's an Eagles fan, I can't remember. I think he's on the Discord. <laughs> now, I won't dox him, but yeah, no, he's yeah. on the Discord. Well done, Farmer. Now for fantasy, I will tell you who is winning. It is Chad Booth. Chad yeah. Booth scored an incredible 1985 during the last buy round, which is pretty damn good. Some people had ridiculous scores in the buy round. They would have just had a full... Yeah, and playing and have a few monsters. Yeah, but you can still only have yeah. 18 players. It's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you dropped down to 52. You were in like the top 30 before. Yeah, I've gone to piss with the buy rounds, I've got to say. Yeah. Yeah. Well, You're 52nd in our league. I'm 59th, and that's actually probably the highest I've been all year. So, woo! But anyway, back to our expert opinions on football. <laughs> First game of the round, Busher, we have Essendon hosting GWS at Marvel Stadium. Now, if you remember in round one, the Giants actually annihilated Essendon. We actually thought Essendon were going to be like absolute spud team because they had like a. We really thought they were going to be Melbourne. Yeah, yeah, we did. <laughs> we basically did. Uh, they were look like they look like a real rabble, uh, and they've steadied. They've won three of their last five and are in tenth with good percentage. What would a win here do for the Bombers? Keep them in the hunt for finals. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you think they'll be out of the finals race if they lose this week? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Especially yeah. if Richmond's still in the same... There's a few teams in the same wins-losses at them that yeah. can overtake them. So you don't want to give those teams an opportunity to leapfrog. So the out. Giants have been pretty consistently good all year. I think we can yeah. agree on that. Uh, their only loss in the last five was an away trip to Adelaide, which is not an easy fixture to begin with. To me, GWS are the second best side in the competition. Do you agree I with I'd me? I'd say second or third. I can't decide between them and Collingwood. It's flip of a coin between those two. We've the last time these two sides met at Marvel Stadium, GWS did beat them. But mm. Essendon did win the spoon that year, so I don't know how much you can take from that. I don't think the Giants are completely safe here. I think this is a danger game for them. Every game is from, important for them, though, because they might get leapfrogged by the Eagles. Who's going to win this week? I had GWS by a couple of goals. I think it'll be a competitive affair. Essendon will come to play, but GWS will just outclass them slightly in the end. Yeah, that's pretty much what I think as well. I think it's going to be a good game. I Definitely. think it's going to be a thriller. I'm tipping the Giants by seven points. What Second game of the round, Geelong versus Adelaide at GMHBA, which has the potential to be a good game, but I could also see it not being a good game. You know what I mean? Yeah. How, How far off is the next best side to Geelong this year? How much further are they Even ahead? Like, literally what the ladder says, they're about a game ahead of the competition. Their yeah. bottom guys have improved. Gross. They've brought in some guys like Rowan Dalhouse for the... Played some important roles as well. The yeah. Cats faltered last week. They had an away trip to Port, but you could say that was probably due. It was coming after yeah. the bye. They never win after the bye. It was a tough away trip, obviously, and they're on a, such a winning streak that uh, you can understand why they weren't as yeah. motivated. So and Port were motivated, I'd say, as well. Yeah. Because that... I'd say with that game of Freo, that was big for the finals. They needed to get one back after dropping one the, the team in equal stead with them. Exactly. This is the second time these two sides have met this year. Earlier this year, Geelong beat Adelaide. I think it was on a Friday night. But I think it's fair to say Adelaide have improved since then. Yeah. I'd say the Crows have built some pretty good momentum lately. And this has become a pretty good test. This is like the, the see where they're at against the benchmark of the yeah. competition. Who's going to win and why? I had Cats by 30. Their Just back line's pretty elite. They, I feel like Stewart and Blitzarves can do a decent job on guys like yeah. Tech. Geelong's firepower. There's a lot of small guys for it. It's going to be hard for Laird and Smith to contain. They've got guys like Myers, Gary Ablett. Do you remember the last time that 
Adelaide won at GMHBA Stadium? I don't think I can recall. No one does. No, it was 2003, so we're going back a pretty long way. And for that reason, I think the Crows will struggle. I think they're going to lose by 34 points because it's it's the GMHBA factor. They're so hard to beat down there. So Geelong by 34 for me. If Adelaide do knock them off, though, it really solidifies them as a contender, I feel. Absolutely. That would be a huge win for them. Next up is Hawthorne facing my beloved West Coast at the MCG. And we have another fucking hoodoo game on our hands. West Coast this year have had massive hoodoo games against Sydney, where they got belted. Uh, They hadn't won there in 20 years at the SCG. And I haven't won in Geelong for 13 years and got belted there. So I'm really hoping we don't see a repeat here against Hawthorne at the MCG where they haven't won since 06. I've tipped Hawthorne, actually. Have you, you dog? By eight points. I feel it'll be a close one, but I feel like Hawthorne, because they can click, and when they do click, everything goes right. And the Eagles can not click at times. Yeah. So I feel like it'll be a combination of that. But probably 90 out of the 100 times these teams play, I'd pick the Eagles, realistically. Yeah, especially on current form. Yeah. But the thing that puts me off tipping the Eagles, in 2017, Hawthorne had crashed towards the bottom of the ladder. This was in, like, round five, though. They lost to Gold Coast by, like, 88 points, okay? And the Eagles were coming off a grand final appearance, uh, or, like, two years ago. So the Eagles were meant to be the real deal. They met in round five, and Hawthorne belted us by 10 goals. So I vowed that day I would never tip the Eagles against Hawthorne at the MCG ever again. I'm actually going to tip the Eagles, so I'm going to contradict myself because I just think, surely, surely. Because we are much better at the MCG than we were back then. Definitely, you've definitely... Because you did have that travelling voodoo, like mm. curse, whatever. (laughs) Voodoo. Yeah, like you weren't a great travelling team, but yeah. you've definitely conquered that, I feel, in the past couple of years. Hawthorne had this ability to pick parts, uh, teams apart on the wider ground, but the Eagles yeah. now have adapted to playing at a wider ground. So I wanted to tip either Hawthorne by 10 goals or West Coast. I've tipped West Coast by 22 points because, you know what? I've been negative enough on the Eagles this year. It's time to get around them. <laughs> Can you tell us what the next game of the round is, Busher? I'm going to tell you it's Sydney and Gold Coast. Uh, Sydney are going real well. I would say in the last five weeks, they've had a bit of... Three out of the last five, yeah. Yeah, three out of the last five. And the two losses were Geelong narrowly and... Uh, Admirable. Yeah, Collingwood by a goal. Okay. They smashed the Eagles. They won in Hobart, which is a tough against North, uh, even though the North have been struggling. And they beat the Hawks last week as well. So would you say they're in a little bit of a resurgence? Yeah. Even though Buddy going down hurts him a bit, i definitely got to say. That's true, that's, that's true. Yeah. And they come up against the side now, Gold Coast, who are on a bit of a horror streak. They've lost mm. nine in a row. I think the last time they played at the SCG, Gold Coast shocked them last year and beat them. Yeah. So that will give them a little bit Do of belief. You, can you make any case for Gold Coast winning this game? If everything goes right for them and everything goes wrong for Sydney, I guess. Yeah, I guess if Sydney's and, bust don't show up. And the thing is with Gold Coast, they've had an ability this year to kind of bring teams down to their level almost and make them play a grittier, grindy, dirtier game where teams can sort of stay Roger. in it. Yeah. The compelling thing for me is the fact that they beat Sydney there last year because I feel like um, that will give them belief, like I just said. But nonetheless, I think the Suns are struggling. Mm. I think the Swans are red hot. And even without Buddy Franklin, they're going to win by 44 points. What is your tip? I had them by 18. So I think Gold Coast, like I said, will grind and make it a messy game where they'll be able to keep it close, but they just won't have the class and finesse to get over the line. Next game is Collingwood hosting North Melbourne at the MCG. I think we just said on the podcast, we sort of look at Collingwood and we kind of think they're kind of just doing enough to get by, aren't they? Like yeah. last week, they just beat the Bulldogs. Both times, Brody Grundy has had like an amazing game. They've yeah. absolutely belted Tim English and both games have been under two goals. So it shows mm. that they're just not quite... Like the real damaging team I think we thought they would be on paper this year. Going with like car gears, I'd probably say they're sitting about third or fourth when they can definitely get into a fifth, sixth sort of that's gear. That's true, yeah. that's true. And it's a good thing to be like third on the ladder yeah. or second on the ladder yeah. now. Um, and we feel like there's still another gear to go to. Yeah. Even them just sort of ticking along is probably good for their health, those sort of things. Like they're not overexerting themselves. They're not burning guys out. Mm-hmm. Their guys are going to be pretty primed and ready to play finals, you'd think. Knees weak, arms are sweaty. Knees weak, arms are sweaty, damn it. <laughs> North, we'd have to say, are def- they've definitely improved since they got rid of Scott. In fact, I think the improvement came a little bit before they let him I was go. Just, I don't think the improvement's because Scott left. Definitely though. not. Definitely I'd not. like to distinguish that. But they have belted Richmond, be- beat the Dogs fairly easily, and obviously the Suns as well. Yeah. So I think they're sort of starting to get back to the form that we thought they would play this year. Starting to meet expectations. Yeah, so. that's it. Do you think that this is a little bit of a danger game for Collingwood? Maybe. Collingwood have definitely had some weak games where they've been caught off guard. They nearly lost lost to Carlton, nearly lost to Sydney, nearly, well they did lose to Freo just, 
even though, albeit controversial circumstances, they do have the potential to drop games. I do think it's worth noting that this game is actually at Marvel Stadium, not at the MCG. I think that kind of takes away from Collingwood a little bit. If this game was at the G, I'd think North would struggle more. Fun fact about North that I learned in Caden McDonald's vlog today. Uh, North play at the MCG less times than Fremantle this year. <laughs> How bad is that? Play hell. Yeah. I do think North are dangerous at the moment. I don't think this is an absolute shoe in but I'm going to tip the safe bet. I'm going to tip Collingwood to win this game by 25 points. What do you reckon? I've gone pies by 40. 40? Yeah. Big and stanky margin there. That's my biggest margin for the week, actually. Okay, do you want to introduce that one? So we're currently looking at the port of... <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking leaving that in. <laughs> All right, Bush, what game do we have next? Port Adelaide and the Bulldogs. So, like we were saying before, Port have been really good at times this year and really inconsistent. I think you could say that about, that about the Bulldogs as well, though, yeah. couldn't you? They're both teams that on their day they can do anyone. Cool. Gross. And then beat them in a game of football. Uh, I think Port have just had like four weeks in a row other than a Geelong where they didn't play at home because they went to China yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. They've also had a bad run with injuries so you can kind of understand their inconsistency a little yeah, bit. Yeah, Rocky's gone down. Do you reckon their win over the Cats could spur them to be a bit more consistent in the second half of the year? They could use that win to gain momentum to make finals, I feel like. They needed that win to stay right in the thick of finals, especially mm. after dropping the game to Freo before that because them and Freo were sitting... Pretty comparable positions. I do hate to say it, but they were 11-4 and four last year, and I think they just beat Richmond and Melbourne in, in consecutive weeks, so they're definitely not completely out of the woods yet. Now, the Dogs, do you reckon you could probably argue that they're even more inconsistent than power? They also don't travel well to Adelaide. Last time they met the Crows there, they kicked two goals, 14. I reckon on their day, both of these sides can play really good football, um, so I'm hoping they bring it this week, but I'm pretty confident... The home ground advantage will see the power do the dogs in, um, in football, and win by 29 points. I had the port winning as well, but I had it a little closer at 15. 15, you yeah. reckon? That would be a pretty good game. I would be happy yeah. if it was I feel a like it game. has the potential to be a good game. The Bulldogs will come to play even if they don't win. You reckon? Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, the next game is St Kilda versus Richmond at Marvel Stadium. Interestingly, Richmond's last game at Marvel Stadium, uh, it's actually their last game anywhere but the MCG this year. How ridiculous is that? It's nice and crazy for them. Don't have to hop on a plane. Last week, St Kilda had a big opportunity to test themselves against a good team in Brisbane, and did they they pass that test? Comfortably. (laughs) Nah, they were absolutely atrocious, really. Yeah, they conceded nine goals to one in the third term, and that kind of summed up their effort. They were absolutely blown away. Considering Brisbane got done by Carlton at Marvel Stadium a couple weeks before this game, that is a pretty bad look for St Kilda, don't you think? It is, but at the same time, you've got to look at it from Brisbane's perspective. Where they, they would have been fired up looking for that redemption in Melbourne after dropping a game to Carlton. Do you think this performance against the Lions from St Kilda was a bit more of an indication of where they're at? As you mentioned on the podcast, like, cause I, I wasn't too worried about it, but then as you mentioned, a lot of their wins were against some pretty average teams. I didn't realise mm. just how average their wins were. They beat Gold Coast twice, um, Carlton once, yeah. and then Hawthorne, Melbourne, maybe Essendon as well. Yeah, you mentioned yeah. Essendon on yeah. the potty. But yeah, I still they've still looked better than they did last year, I feel like. They've, they're definitely an improved team. It's funny how the pressure's right back on Richo. Do mm. you think that's valid? He has been there a while, but... From the improvement I've seen this year, as long as they don't completely shit the bed the rest of the year, I, I think give him another year. It's fair to say the Tigers are equally battling going into this game. They've been walloped in their last three games going into the bye. They've also been walloped by injuries, to be fair to them. But... Yeah, that's true. I think the bye came at a good time because they're going to get a few players back. Yeah. I think Edwards is a test to come back this week. Cochin as well. A Brownlow medalist and an All-Australian. Yeah, exactly right. That's true. And then Rewalt's like... Two to four away, I think. Uh, I don't, can't remember. <laughs> the Tigers sit in ninth with a percentage of 92%. How detrimental to their season would loss be here? It'd make it hard for them to make finals yeah. even with that MCG home run home. Yeah. So it just puts them two games back from being in the eight, I think. Yeah, it would be it's iffy. A, yeah. I don't know if you'd rule them out for sure because they're only like one a game out. but You'd still. need a team like Freo to shit the bed or Paul. Um, <laughs> what's your tip for this game then? St Kilda Richmond. I've gone the Saints by three, actually. Oh, that would be an absolute nilsy. I have gone differently. I'm going to tip Richmond by 21 points. I think they're too good to lose. I can understand, definitely. Yeah. But I'm feeling St Kilda, everything will click. Canterbury's had a run. A week's run. Second last game of the round, Bush up Brisbane versus Melbourne at the Gabba. 
I could see this band game with around myself, actually. Uh, Lions, really. as you can understand from a young team, have been pretty up and down in recent weeks. But like we just said, yeah. they belted St Kilda in Melbourne. Do you think that's an important win for them? It's good for their confidence back to show they can play well in Melbourne, even against a team like St Kilda. I think it made a good statement for them because they need, yeah, like you said, to win a way game, which yeah. is important if you're going to make the finals. And because they got done by Carlton a few weeks ago, mm. I think people were starting to think, Ugh, are they a little bit over it? But now yeah. it seems like they've got their mojo back a little bit. Yeah. Charlie Cameron went absolutely nuts last week as well. How do you think Charlie Cameron ranks in terms of the competition small forward? He'd be top four or five, definitely. How far off is he from a Michael Walters? They're quite, they're a little bit different, aren't they? He'd need, the thing is with Walters these days, he plays a bit more midfield time. He gets yeah. the opportunity to rack up the posies a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. But I'd say Cameron's probably at the same age in their career, I'd say Cameron's better small forward than Walters was. But yeah. Walters... It's probably better around the ground than Cameron. Yeah, Cameron... But, but in terms of a small forward, Cameron's a very good small forward. Cameron's much more like explosive, exciting yeah. forward who can just create the moments of brilliance. Yeah. Walters is a little bit more consistent over the four quarters, yeah. isn't he? Are the Demons improving, and is this game gettable? They have the talent to get anyone at any time, really, but they've just been underdone. They haven't been able to click. Melbourne were definitely decent last week. I yeah. think you'd have to say, though, that to win this week, this would have to be their best performance of the year. Yeah, definitely. Really? They've, they've started to make a bit of a fortress of the Gabber again, which is true important for a finals campaign as well, really. The Ds did win their last trip to the Gabba, but I think the form lines were very different. I think it was only yeah. last year. Lines were struggling and Melbourne was doing really well, yeah, yeah. so I don't think you're reading anything to exactly. that. What's your tip, though, for this game? I've gone the Lions by 24. I've gone Lions by 17, so I think we're thinking along the same yeah. Lions there. <laughs> but I think Melbourne keep it close for most of the game. Yeah. And it's a really tight, contested, good game. Surprised if it's a big yeah. Brisbane win. I, think I don't say been any bigger than I tip. That's about as big as it'll get. Yeah. Last game of the round is Fremantle versus Carlton. An absolute thriller on our hands, Eric. <laughs> yeah. What was your assessment of Fremantle's loss last week? Our pressure and stuff was pretty good on the whole. Like Most of the game we looked good, but we dropped off in that second half, which we did have two guys. We were two guys down, which didn't help. But at the same time, we shouldn't drop off quite as hard as we did in that second half. How big a loss is Hogan going forward? Production-wise, he hasn't been producing as well as people have probably hoped since he came over. But structurally, I feel like even when Hogan's not playing well, teams have to assume he's playing well and play him accordingly. So now that he's gone, that means Brennan Cock is going to be getting more attention. Carlton are a little bit of an enigma at the moment. Since they sacked Bolton, they beat Brisbane, and they pushed the Dogs all the way. I think they scored like five or six yeah. goals in red time, which was absolutely ridiculous. That was one of the games of the season. Personally, I don't think that's a bad reflection on Brendan Bolton. I think the team's just a bit motivated mm. after the loss, the, yeah. um, the sack. Like a lot of guys on that list probably like, yeah, if we don't get actually together, we could be delisted other than like the obvious mm. guys who are pretty safe, like your Cripses and the other high picks who have been good for them. Carlton actually aren't too bad a Perth side. But yeah. I would be pretty astounded if they win here. This I've gone Freo by 20 because I think Carton will keep it interesting. Freo will make enough mistakes to keep him in it as Fair well. Yeah. I have tipped Fremantle by 44. I think they'll blow him out of the water this week. I hope you're right and I'm wrong. Cool, man. All right, so we just got through a full round of footy tipping. How do you feel? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> pretty happy. I hope... Hopefully my tips come off and I can climb up the tipping ladder. Because as mentioned earlier, I'm not doing too good. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so we've tipped almost the same except Hawthorne, you tipped, and I tipped yeah. West Coast. What a fucking surprise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you've been following the channel, you'll know this might be our last tipping video for uh, a month maybe because I'm going to Europe. If you want to keep up with what we're doing, follow us at True Footy Official on Instagram. You can actually follow Bush's personal Instagram account, the Prostate Tickler 95 <laughs> <laughs> Alright, thanks for watching guys See you next time <laughs>